Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got banished and got harem with Temari, Hataru and Shizuka. Part 9 If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. After Naruto and his team's visit to Suna, they were flying across the ninja land on the carpet, with Naruto looking around, how much further is this hideout, Naruto? Suijetsu asked as he slouched. Shouldn't be too much farther. Naruto admitted as he continued looking up ahead for any visible signs of something. You said that an hour ago. Suijetsu complained, until Karen growled. Suijetsu, shut up. She restrained herself from wanting to smack him in the back of the head. Yugo looked ahead, Naruto, what's that up ahead? Naruto looked in the direction Yugo was motioning and saw a forest area with multiple bones that looked like they came from giant creatures lying around, this is it. We're here. Naruto explained grabbing the attention of his team. It's about time. Suijetsu grumbled. Prepare to land. Naruto ordered, as he brought the carpet down and landed in the forest outside the entryway to Abito's hideout. This is the place. Yugo asked looking at all the huge bones. Correct, Naruto began and turned to Karen, okay, Karen. Do your stuff. Karen nodded and formed a hand seal while closing her eyes and concentrating seeing a hundred thousand chakra signatures. She gasped and opened her eyes, there are over a thousand chakra signatures in there. Has to be the white Zetsu clones, Naruto theorized, any signatures closer to entrance? None. Karen admitted. Well at least there's nothing in the front waiting for us, Naruto sighed in relief, but stay close behind me just in case. He ordered as the three nodded, and Suijetsu drew his sword. So they proceed in cautiously, as Naruto guided them through one of the many secret openings hidden beneath the bones of the giant animals. Having read Abito's mind with his psychic power he saw all his memories and knew the base inside and out. The group walked around the dark hideout, with Naruto's team feeling tense while Naruto remained clam and collected. Finally they stopped before a room with a metal door, that Naruto used his psychic power to pry open the door. They entered inside seeing they were inside a laboratory, and on both sides of the room on the walls were about over a hundred glass containers, and in each of those containers was a single Sharingan eyeball suspended in fluid, oh Kami. Karen felt ready to gag at the preserved eyeballs. Holy! Suijetsu gasped in shock. So many Sharingan eyes. Yugo gasped in amaze. Makes me wonder how many Uchiha members Madara and Abito sacrificed just to obtain these, Naruto began with a scowl, well sorry Abito, these are no longer your property. He summoned over a hundred clones and each of them went to both walls and removed all the glass containers and began sealing them a massive scroll. So what are you going to do with them? Yugo asked curiously. Much like with Abito's eyes, I'm keeping these for leverage. Naruto answered as he and his clones continued sealing the containers. Why not simply destroy them? Karen asked seeing how it seems easier. Very tempting, but both Madara and Abito went through so much trouble just to preserve these, Naruto answered, I'd hate to see their efforts be all for naught. And I can't just send them all to Basan. If Danzo found out about them there's no telling what he'd try to do to get his decrepit old hand on them. Can we go now? Karen asked seeing how Naruto and all his clones finished sealing all the containers. Not yet. There's still more to do. Naruto answered as he dispelled all his clones and packed his scrolls. He led his team out of the lab and found another room containing weaponry ranging from various ninja weapons, such as sickles, large shuriken, swords, chains with weights, and many other types, hmm, these could sell for a lot of cash. Naruto admitted until he looked up ahead seeing on the wall was a gun by with the Sharingan Tomo on both sides of it, hello, what have we here? What's that? Suijetsu asked as he, Karen, and Yugo noticed Naruto approached the battle fan. Naruto began, if from my look through Abito's memories and history of the Uchiha clan is correct, this is the battle fan wielded by Madara Uchiha himself. Whoa, that was used by one of Kanoha's founders. Suijetsu gasped almost looking ready to choke. Yes, 
but it's ripe for the taking now, Naruto removed it from its mounted wall and held it, I think I could make good use of this. Are we done here? Suijetsu asked in boredom. One last thing left. Naruto answered as he once again showed his team through the hideout. Finally they entered another chamber and saw to their shock a giant statue on top of a giant flower, what is that? Yugo gasped. Naruto answered, the ghetto statue. Or more commonly known as the Jubi's body. That's a tailed beast. Karen gasped in shock. It's huge. Suijetsu gasped while looking up at it. That's the very statue the Akatsuki are using to seal the removed bijou from the Jinchuriki, Naruto continued to explain, apparently when all nine of them are sealed back into it, it will be revived again. Can't you use your powers to destroy it? Suijetsu inquired. That would be logical, Naruto began before shifting his mood to more seriously, however the Shikaku is already sealed inside of it. Destroying the statue could possibly destroy the Achibi, but who's to say if I destroy it Shikaku will be released to rampage? We wouldn't have a way to seal it elsewhere. So I'd rather not chance it. So then what are we going to do? Karen asked her family member. Well first we're going to destroy that, Naruto started as he motioned up to the non-living clone of Hashirama Senju, which took his teammates by surprise. He then walked closer to the statue and looked beneath it, and these. The three looked down and gawked seeing there were a hundred thousand white Zetsu clones, just as Naruto said there would be, that's a lot of living Shou Dai Mei clones. Yugo gasped in shock. And each one of them has to go. Naruto explained. Shouldn't we be worried about them attacking us? Suijetsu asked Naruto. Karen answered while concentrating, they all seem to be in a state of hibernation. Yes, they won't awake unless they're needed. Naruto added as he summoned over a thousand clones. The three watched their leader and his clones make some stuff, and were curious as to what he was planning to do. Soon Naruto and his thousands of clones each held a Molotov B tail, with the cloth piece sticking out of each already lit, Naruto what are you planning? Karen asked suspiciously knowing once the flames are ignited with the fluid in the bottles it'll go up in flames. Once we throw them in we need to get out of here. Naruto explained as he and his clones threw their molotovs down to the white Zetsu army. He quickly dispelled all his clones and used his psychic to fly out while dragging his team with him. Karen screamed as the thousands of molotovs ignited and behind them was an erupting fire that started spreading down the tunnel they were flying out of. We're not gonna make it. Suijetsu called. We can. Naruto shouted as he picked up the pace and they flew out of the hideout before it went up in flames and burned to the ground. When there was nothing left of the hideout, Yugo spoke up, so that's it? Yeah, Naruto nodded, all of Abito's Zetsu army and the grown Hashirama clone has been incinerated. And the statue? Karen asked curiously. I'm willing to bet is still in one piece. Naruto theorized. You wanna go back and check it out? Suijetsu offered. Not interested, Naruto answered, we did our job here. So now where do we go from here? Yugo wondered what was next. Hmm, Naruto pondered as he pulled out a map and began to think on it, well I know this good place in Yugikure. We could enjoy a good bath there. Really, a bath? Karen gasped in delight. Meh, sounds okay. Suijetsu answered like it didn't matter. Works for me. Yugo admitted. All right then team, Naruto began as he unsealed their carpet and got on it, before using his powers to levitate it off the ground, climb aboard. So the three got on the carpet and Naruto flew them off away from the former hideout of Abito, leaving it behind as a forgotten memory. Hours later the group were in Yugikure, and were already soaking in an open-air bath on their respective gender side, ah, this bath does a body good, eh guys? Naruto asked as he relaxed and soaked in the onsen with his upper chest sticking out. I do feel rather rejuvenated. Yugo admitted. Yeah, this really was a good place to pick, Naruto. Suijetsu added as he raised his arms up to stretch. So Naruto how many more members of the Akatsuki are there? Yugo inquired. Naruto turned to him and noticed Suijetsu looked curious as well, 
well there's Itachi, Kisame, Kakuzu, Pain, and Conan. He listed off having seen Pain and Conan through Abito's memories. Only five huh? Suijetsu asked, well I'm sure with your powers it won't be that difficult. Well remember, Itachi's on our side, Naruto reminded them, and Pain and Conan aren't what they appear to be as well. He added recalling the name Nagato from Jiraiya's book Tales of a Gutsy Ninja as the source of inspiration from when he wrote it. Yugo and Suijetsu were confused as to what Naruto meant by that, but were enjoying themselves and were too relaxed to even continue further. When nighttime came, the four were planning to turn in, until Naruto started having a premonition and saw Itachi on his way to the forest area outside the village. He snapped out of it and spoke up, guys. What, what is it? Karen asked in concern. I just had a vision. He answered. What did you see? Yugo asked as Karen and Suijetsu were curious as well. I saw Itachi, he's heading for the forest outside the village. Obviously to rendezvous with me. Naruto explained. Whoa, are you serious? Suijetsu asked. I am. So if you guys want to see it for yourselves, come with me. Naruto instructed. Let's go. Suijetsu said as the four left the inn through the window and headed for the forest. Once there, they just stood waiting impatiently, until Karen sighed, are you absolutely sure he's showing up? My premonitions have never let me down so far. Naruto answered confidently. Well how much longer do we have to wait? Suijetsu asked just feeling about ready to call it. Suddenly they heard multiple crow caws, making the three confused, while Naruto smirked, we wait no longer. Flying out from the trees surrounding them were a swarm of crows that started coming together to form Itachi, which surprised Naruto's team. Itachi looked to Naruto, and spoke, Hello, Naruto. Evening, Itachi. Naruto greeted him. So that's really him? Suijetsu gasped. Itachi Uchiha. Karen gasped in equal shock. Itachi looked ahead and saw the three, and smiled, I see you made some new friends since the last time we met. Yeah, Naruto began introducing them, this is Suijetsu, this is Karen, and this here is Yugo. Guys, this is Itachi. Nice to meet you three. Itachi greeted them respectively. Likewise, I guess. Suijetsu answered feeling awkward. Forgive our awkwardness, but it's kind of hard to feel at ease around someone who murdered his whole clan. Even if against their will. Yugo explained as respectively as he could. So Naruto told you three the truth. Itachi asked while eyeballing Naruto who looked sheepish. He did. Karen confirmed his question. Itachi looked to Naruto, who began explaining, I'm sorry Itachi, but there was something suspicious when I had a vision and went off to deal with Toby. For the sake of our team and trust one told them about you. I see, Itachi answered before sighing, well it's better between you four and not anyone of Kanoha. Anyway Naruto I came looking for you because of what happened not too long ago. Tobi, Deidara, and Zetsu. You defeated all three. Well I had help. He admitted while motioning to his team who smiled. And Tobi, was he really Madara? Itachi inquired. Naruto shook his head, not even close, he answered, he was an Uchiha, though. He just wasn't Madara Uchiha. Then who was he? Itachi asked curiously. He was a Bito Uchiha. Naruto answered, putting a look of shock on the Uchiha's face. A Bito? He gasped. So you know of him as well? Suijetsu asked. Of course, Itachi answered. I would hear many of the Uchiha elders and my parents talk about the heroism and sacrifice Abito showed at the location of the Kanabi Bridge during the last war. Well I hate to break it to you, Naruto began, but what I'm about to tell you will destroy any heroic thoughts you ever might have had for your ancestor. What do you mean? Itachi asked. Sit down, because this is going to be a complicated story. Naruto started as he began telling Itachi the full story of what happened when he and his team fought the three Akatsuki members, including all the memories he saw inside Abito's mind. 
After the long story he finally finished, and that's everything. Itachi was for the first time shocked and confused at all Naruto had just told him. He finally spoke up, I never would have guessed it. Threw me for a spin myself. Naruto admitted. So Abito was twisted and warped by the cycle of hatred just like Madara. Itachi sighed. I don't intend on telling anyone in Konoha about his true identity otherwise I will have crushed the spirits of Kakashi, Kurinai, Asuma, and Gai. Naruto assured him. Good, Naruto. As always I can't let the Uchiha name be tainted like this, Itachi began, Abito Uchiha like all the others will remain the way they were remembered as by the others, and not for the truth. I respect you willing to continue shouldering the burden of mine and my family's secret on your shoulder. Well it's not easy, Itachi. However for the sake of Kanoha's safety from an uprising of villagers and shinobi alike I will hold my tongue. Naruto promised. And we will as well. Yugo promised on behalf of himself, Karen, and Suijetsu, who both nodded in assurance. Itachi looked at the four feeling as if more of the weight of his family's secret was lifted off him, Arigato, everyone, he cleared his throat, now then Naruto, about the eyes you've acquired of Abito's and those he's kept hidden in his lab. You want me to hand them over to you? Naruto asked suspecting that's what he'd request. Itachi shook his head, no. I want you to hold on to them. I feel they're better off and safer in your capable hands. Just promise me you'll take care of them. I promise, Itachi. Naruto promised. Itachi looked up at the sky, well I better get going. I'll see you again another time, Naruto. He burst into crows that flew off into the night sky. Naruto and his team watched the crows fly off before Yugo spoke, well it's nice to see we do have an ally in our enemy's camp. Yeah. Karen nodded in agreement along with Naruto, until they heard Suijetsu groan in frustration. Oh man, I forgot to ask him how Kisame-senpai was doing. The Hozuki boy berated himself. Don't worry, if we run into him you can find out for yourself. Naruto assured him. You think so? Suijetsu asked hopefully. We're gonna eventually come across him, so yeah. Naruto noted. Suijetsu smiled with renewed hope, well I can't wait for that. I'll show him that I was just as worthy of becoming a member of the Seven Swordsmen as Mengetsu was. The others chuckled at his excitement before Naruto spoke up, well let's get back to the inn. Tomorrow is another day after all. He reminded them as the four headed back to the village inn. Up in the sky, Naruto and his team were flying about on the carpet, isn't this great, guys? Naruto began, clear skies, cool breeze. Perfect day for a fly huh? It is very peaceful, I admit it. Yugo admitted as he kicked back. Yeah. A chance for us to just relax for a change. Karen added as she was relaxing as well. I suppose, I just wish there was something else for us to do. Suijetsu said dully. Naruto turned his head to see his teammate, Suijetsu, how can you just? Naruto froze in place as he once again received a premonition due to his powers. He could see the scenery was at a bounty station close to Kanoha. The people he saw included Shikamaru, Asuma, Izumo, and Kotetsu taking on who else but the Akatsuki member Kakuzu. He saw Kakuzu was using his tendrils against the four Kanoha shinobi, but hadn't released any of his chakra creatures that represents his four extra hearts yet. Suddenly he woke up from his trance with his partners looking worried, Naruto. Did you have another vision? Karen asked. Yes. I saw my friend Shikamaru with his sensei Asuma, along with Izumo and Kotetsu taking on Kakuzu. Naruto explained. What? The three gasped. That guy again? Suijetsu asked. Correct. Naruto nodded as he guided the carpet in the direction of where Kanoha would be at a fat's pace. Where are we going? Yugo gasped as he and the others held on tight. We're gonna stop him. Naruto answered firmly. What? The three gasped in shock. Naruto. If you set foot in Kanoha you'll be charged of violating your banishment. Karen shouted. 
Yeah man, they'll try and have you executed, Suijetsu began before muttering, not that they'd have a chance. On the contrary guys. The place I saw them in is outside the village, Naruto began smugly, they didn't say I was banished from every place in the land of fire, just Kanoha. Ah. Suijetsu caught on, excellent loophole. Exactly. So Suijetsu, you wanted excitement. Well excitement's what you're gonna get. Naruto called as he made the carpet fly faster. Sometime later, the events of what Naruto saw in his vision were indeed happening. Shikamaru, Asuma, Izumo, and Kotetsu were indeed fighting Kakuzu outside a bounty office. Izumo and Kotetsu were recovering from the rounds they took against the Nuke Nin, while Kakuzu was facing Asuma and Shikamaru down, as the Nuke Nin looked at Asuma, Asuma Sarutobi, he began, you much like your fellow guard Chiriku are very profitable. After today I will have made two jackpots. Asuma smirked, well sorry to say this, but your check's been denied. Is this seriously a good time to be joking, Asuma? Shikamaru asked dryly. Kakuzu raised his hands preparing to use a jutsu, only for him to look to at his side seeing a familiar giant sword swing at him. Before it could impale him, Kakuzu jumped back as the sword struck the ground, taking the four Kanoha shinobi by surprise, what was that? Izumo gasped. It can't be. Kakuzu gasped. The group looked up and dropping before them was Suijetsu, Yugo, Karen, and Naruto in the center. Naruto lifted his head revealing to be in sage mode. The four Kanoha shinobi were in shock, especially Izumo and Kotetsu, while Kakuzu was enraged, you again. Hey Kakuzu. Naruto greeted him smugly. Naruto. Shikamaru gasped. What are you doing here? Asuma asked in confusion. I saw you were in trouble, so me and my team decided to help out. Naruto answered. Team. Shikamaru and Asuma asked as they looked over at the three others accompanying Naruto. Missed us, Kakuzu. Suijetsu inquired. Kakuzu growled, you got the drop on me and Haydn last time. But now I'm back to having all of my hearts restored. Then I guess we're just going to have to take them out one by one, Naruto replied as Suijetsu took his sword, and Yugo morphed into his half-curse mode. Naruto motioned to the Kanoha shinobi, you guys take five and rest up. We got this. The four Kanoha shinobi who were so caught up with seeing Naruto's sudden arrival with three new faces were too shocked to argue with him. Suijetsu readied his sword, while Yugo readied his axe blade and the two went at it against Kakuzu who was dodging their moves, let's see ya, dodge this. Suijetsu called as he swung his sword only for Kakuzu to activate a hand sign causing his body to grow dark. When the sword came into contact with his body the sword started cracking, much to Suijetsu's shock. Pitiful attempt. Kakuzu said stoically as he suddenly broke half of the blade off. No. Suijetsu shouted, before getting knocked away, only to get back to his feet. He looked at his broken sword and sighed, now I got to repair this later. Don't worry, Suijetsu, Naruto began, you held him good enough for me to use this. Naruto said as he revealed his Cho Udama Rasengan. Oh no not again. Kakuzu called, as Naruto flew at the nuke Nin nailing him with his jutsu sending him crashing into the wall of the bounty office. Whoa. The four Kanoha shinobi gasped at the power of his jutsu. Kakuzu peeled off the wall with his cloak shredded along with his doton heart shattered. Kakuzu frowned at Naruto and spoke, once again you make a mockery out of me. He shouted as his three extra hearts manifest in the chakra-masked creatures of Katan, Raitan, and Futon. What are those things? Kotetsu gasped. I don't know. Izumo answered. Naruto smirked seeing Kakuzu unleash his extra hearts, you saved me the trouble of calling them out. Now they're right where I want them, he held his arms and froze the three chakra beasts in place and brought them closer and away from Kakuzu, Yugo. Go crazy. Yugo nodded and went full curse mode and went berserk on the three hearts, destroying them. Everyone watched as Yugo finished off the Katan heart, much to Kakuzu's frustration, you insolent little. 
Kakaza growled as he felt ready to once again attack Naruto in blind rage only for him to suddenly halt, what, why can't I move my body? He suddenly saw one of Asuma's chakra knives with a tag connected to it striking the spot on the ground where his shadow was. Naruto seeing Shikamaru combined his trademark jutsu with Asuma's chakra knife felt intrigued, before looking at the two, didn't I say you could relax? Normally I would have done so, but this time I couldn't bear to watch you do everything. Shikamaru answered as Asuma nodded in agreement. Well thanks. Naruto replied as he approached the paralyzed Kakuzu. I'm not done yet. Kakuzu launched his fist from his arm like a rocket only for it to be frozen in mid-air due to Naruto's psychic. Actually you are. Naruto said using his psychic to crush Kakuzu's detached arm making Izumo and Kotetsu shocked. How did he? Kotetsu trailed off as Naruto stuck his hand out to Kakuzu. Time for you to go to pieces. Naruto said to Kakuzu as he was suddenly ripped to pieces with his only heart finally giving out. Everyone watched all that remained of Kakuzu was a broken corpse with tendrils. Naruto lowered his arm and his eyes returned to normal, while Yugo returned to his normal state. The redhead boy looked to the Kanoha shinobi before speaking, you can relax now that this guy is out of commission. Naruto, don't you know? Shikamaru began, only for Naruto to at him off. I'm aware of my banishment, Shikamaru. However as you can plainly see I'm not in Kanoha so I haven't broken the rule. He does bring up a point. Izumo agreed. There was no rule made he can't step foot in the land of fire. Kotetsu added. Exactly, Naruto nodded, wish I could stay longer, but my team and I really need to go. Shikamaru. Yes. Shikamaru asked. Naruto flung a slip of paper to him which he caught, give that to Ba-san when you see her. Okay. Uh, sure. Shikamaru answered. Come on guys. Let's go. Naruto ordered his team as they took off. The four watched them leave, as Kotetsu spoke, was that really Naruto? I can't imagine it being anybody else. Izumo answered knowing he used Raisingan which to this day is only known to either him or Jiraiya. We better report this to the Hokage. Asuma suggested. Should we tell her about? Izumo began, only for Shikamaru to interrupt him. I'll tell her personally. He fingered the slip of paper Naruto gave him. Some time later it was getting late, as Tsunade was jumping through some trees in the forest outside Kanoha, with Shizune following her in hot pursuit, Tsuandasama. Keep up the pace, Shizune. She ordered. I'm trying, but don't you think you're overdoing it? Shizune pondered. If I am it's worth it. Tsunade bellowed as Shizune kept silent and continued following her master. They arrived at the edge of the forest by a cliff seeing a red-haired figure standing by the edge of it looking out into the distance, could that be? Shizune gasped as the two ladies got closer as Tswanda addressed him. Naruto. She asked hopefully. In response, the figure turned around revealing to them they were right and that it was Naruto. The young man smiled and spoke, Hey Ba-san, Nei-san. I see you got my letter to meet me here. Tsunade and Shizune were lost for words as a single tear came into each of their eyes, before shouting, Naruto. They lunged at the boy pulling him into a group embrace. It really is you. Shizune cried as she hugged him from behind. We missed you so much. Tsunade cried as she hugged his head close to her bosom. I missed you too. Naruto said with his voice all muffled due to his face in the valley of her chest. Tsunade realizing what she was doing released him, so sorry about that. She pulled herself together. I know, Naruto said as he took in air, I wish our meeting could be under better circumstances than what happened moments ago. I just can't believe it's really you. Tsunade gasped. You look so different over the last three years, Shizune added, and yet you still look as if you haven't truly changed. The best qualities of a guy don't change that easy, Shizune ne. Naruto smiled. How did you know to show up where Shikamaru and the others were? Tsunade inquired. 
Well you know of what I've been secretly including in my letters as of late. He raised his brows to give them the hint. The two nodded in response, as he continued, while I could see them fighting Kakuzu. I couldn't just ignore what was happening to them, after seeing it in my mind. Even if you're not a Kanoha shinobi, you're still loyal to those close to you. Tsunade smiled. Hey. A voice called as they looked seeing Naruto's group approach, aren't you gonna introduce us yet, Naruto? Suijetsu asked. Tsunade and Shizune were surprised, until Naruto spoke up, right. Basan. Nasan. Allow me to introduce to you my new team. New team? Shizune asked. Yes. This is Suijetsu, this is Yugo, and this is Karen. Naruto introduced them, guys meet the Hokage of Kanoha Tsunade, and her assistant Shizune. Nice to meet you. The three bowed their heads in respect. Naruto, how did you manage to incorporate these three to follow you? Tsunade asked in amaze. I made them an offer they couldn't refuse. Naruto responded as if he was in a mob, while his team rolled their eyes. Well it's nice to see you're not traveling alone anymore. Tsunade said in relief. Yeah. These guys are my shall we say Akatsuki hunting squad. Naruto humored them. Speaking of Akatsuki we heard about what's been happening, Tsunade continued, they've been dropping like flies thanks to you. Yeah. Soon enough they'll all go just like Orokamaru. Naruto added. I hope so. Tsunade put in. Hey I promise you I'll be alright. Naruto promised her. And we'll see to it he is. Karen put in as Suijetsu and Yugo nodded in assurance. Tsunade and Shizune smiled, as Naruto continued, so exactly why was Kakuzu around here? Tsunade explained, he invaded the Temple of Fire and killed one of their monks known as Chiriku, who was an old associate of Asuma's. When we got word of what happened we dispatched Shikamaru, and the others to track him down. I see, Naruto answered and moved on to another topic, what about Danzo? It's been a while since I saw any of his root flunkies. I'm afraid we have nothing current on him. Tsunade sighed. It's like he's gone underground into hiding. Shizune added. Suijetsu spoke up, I guess he got tired of hunting you, Naruto. If only I could believe that. Naruto said dryly, while rolling his eyes. So what are you going to do now? Shizune asked curiously. Me and my group are once again off to roam the ninja land hoping to find more people to live in my planned village. But until the Akatsuki are eliminated I won't be safe to do the real formation of my village. Luckily I have many alliances as of late to help me. I wish I could lend you my support, Naruto, Tsunade said somberly, but with Hamura and Koharu leaning over my shoulders I can't do anything too freely. I understand. Naruto nodded in understanding but it matters not. One day they'll realize how much they did me wrong. Hopefully. Hey I'm sorry to cut this tender reunion up, Naruto, Suijetsu began, but we really have to go. Naruto sighed but admitted, yes. We do. You're leaving. Shizune asked in shock. Yeah. We really have to go. If word got out of me being close to here and associating with you could cause a outrage. Naruto explained. So then this is goodbye. Tsunade asked on the verge of tears. For now, but don't worry I'm sure we'll see each other again, Naruto promised, until then, later. He jumped backwards off the cliff. Naruto. The lady screamed at what he did but gasped seeing him fly back up on a carpet. Gotcha. Naruto laughed hysterically at their reactions. Naruto's teammates rolled their eyes expecting such a stunt by their fearless leader, while Tswanda frowned while bawling a fist, you and your jokes. She was ready to deck him, but remembered she was on a cliff and almost fell off before Shizune pulled her back onto the edge, still the same old. She sighed with a smile. Naruto chuckled, come on guys. Let's get a move on. So Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo jumped onto the carpet that floated up higher above the two ladies, see you two around. He called as the carpet took off with them. 
Su Nade and Shizune watched in nostalgia as one of their favorite of young boys leave, but knew that he was going to be all right as he's been for the last three years. As Naruto and his team continued flying off, Naruto spoke, and Kakuzu. Checked. Another Akatsuki member down. Karen said. Yeah. Not too many left now. Naruto added. I hope we get to do some more fighting soon, even if our opponents are weaklings, Suijetsu spoke up, I need victim's blood in order for my sword to repair itself. The group chuckled humorously as they continued flying off into the distance. Out in a forest, Naruto, Yugo, Karen, and Suijetsu were taking on a whole gang of bandits. Naruto was using his psychic to push some back, or snap their bones. Yugo was using his curse abilities to crush any bandit that tried to touch him, Karen was giving out orders as to where more were coming from, and finally Suijetsu was going all out, while using his broken sword to cut through whatever bandit he could. Naruto landed near Karen, as she spoke, sheesh, Suijetsu isn't even using strategy. He's just slicing away. After doing enough killing, Naruto, Yugo, and Karen just sat back, watching Suijetsu finish the job until the whole gang was killed, oh yeah. Suijetsu called, as he held his fully restored sword up into the air triumphantly. You done yet? Karen asked, feeling bored. Yeah, I'm about done. Suijetsu answered, as he placed his sword on his back again. Well we took care of this whole gang, so that means we can collect our fee now. Yugo noted. Yeah, so let's get back to town, collect our loot, and relax. Naruto instructed. I'm down with that. Suijetsu agreed, as the four headed off. When they reached the town close to the forest, they went to the local authorities and collected their fee for getting rid of the bandit gang. Afterward they were walking through the town before seeing a restaurant up ahead, come on, guys. Lunch is on me. Good, I'm starving. Suijetsu said, in excitement. You always are. Karen replied. I am not. Are so. Now you too. Yugo said, as he broke them up. Come on you guys, let's go chow down. Naruto said as he was getting hungry. Room for another? A voice called out. Naruto's team were taken by surprise at the new voice, while Naruto knowing it from anywhere looked up into a tree, and saw Jiraiya standing on a branch, Erosenin. He cheered. How's it going, Naruto? Jiraiya asked, as he dropped down from the tree and landed before them. Whoa, who is that? Suijetsu asked. That's Jiraiya-sama of the legendary San Nin, remember? Karen asked him. Oh yeah. He remembered. So that's the second of Oro Kamaru's former teammates. Yugo said in wonder. Jiraiya noticing the other three spoke up, so this is the team you've put together huh, Naruto? Yeah. Ero Senin, this is Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo, Naruto introduced them, and guys, meet my former mentor, Jiraiya. It's an honor to meet you, Jiraiya-sama. Karen bowed her head, along with Yugo and Suijetsu. It's nice to meet you three too. I trust you've been looking after my former apprentice. He asked. Oh yeah. We've been taking very good care of him. Suijetsu chuckled with Yugo, while Naruto rolled his eyes. So what brings you around these parts, Ero Senin, off on more research I presume? Naruto smirked. You got me. Jiraiya chuckled. Any good ladies you found inspiration from? Naruto asked curiously. Maybe some, you interested in a little sneak peek? Jiraiya tempted him. If you're offering. Well let's do lunch, and we'll talk. Jiraiya offered. Works for me, come on guys. Naruto said, as he walked on ahead. As he reached the corner, someone else came from the other side, and the two collided with each other, and fell to the ground, oh, that hurt. He groaned, before looking at who he bumped into. It was a girl, who looked to be about a few years older than Naruto. She had short black hair, and wore not only an IWA headband, but the standard IWA shinobi attire as well. The girl noticed Naruto, and gasped, Hey Naruto, 
Wadaya no. Kuro-chan. Naruto laughed in amusement, as the two got to their feet. Naruto. The group approached. Are you okay? Jiraiya asked. Never better. He answered. Who is this? Karen asked curiously. An IWA Kanoichi. Suijetsu gasped, knowing it could be dangerous. Relax. She's on the level with us. Naruto assured him. So this is your team? The girl asked him. Yeah, meet Suijetsu, Yugo, Karen, and my old mentor Jiraiya. Guys, this is Kuratsuchi of IWA. Naruto introduced them. Nice to meet you all. Kuratsuchi greeted them. Am I the only one, who sees there is something wrong here? Suijetsu asked. Kuratsuchi. A voice called as a big guy approached, there you are. Naruto. He asked seeing the boy. Hey, Akatsuchi. Naruto greeted him. Well isn't it a small world? Akatsuchi chuckled. Naruto, how do you know these IWA shinobi so well? Yugo inquired. Well we have history, he answered, but how about I tell you over lunch? Sounds good to me. Akatsuchi smiled. Me too. Kuratsuchi agreed. So they all headed for the restaurant, and soon were eating, while Karen asked, So Naruto, how do you know these two IWA shinobi? Well this was years ago, before I even met you guys, he began, during my three years of traveling ever since my banishment I went all over the ninja land. Of course Kyumo and IWA weren't on my list due to various reasons. But eventually Ero Senen sent me a message saying that my presence was requested in IWA. I was skeptical of it, but since it was given to me by a summoning toad I knew it had to be real and wasn't a fake. So I flew out there it met up with the San Daime Tsuchikagi, where he revealed a very deep secret that was kept from me and Kanoha. What kind of secret? Yugo asked. Kuratsuchi answered, Naruto was promised by his father to become my husband. What? Naruto's team gasped in shock. You were promised to her. Suijetsu asked, Naruto in surprise. Yeah. He answered. How did this happen? Yugo wondered. Well you know during the last ninja war between Kanoha and IWA? Naruto began, as his team nodded, well as it turns out my dad and Kuratsuchi's gramps the San Daime met secretly and forged a secret alliance between villages. A secret alliance? Karen asked. Yes. An alliance between the villages where we'd help each other secretly from the shadows. Kuratsuchi explained. It was kept a secret from our villages at the time, because. Well you know the situation in Kanoha. Naruto said, knowing full well Danzo, Koharu, and Hamura would do something to muck it up. It would be made official when I the San Daimi's granddaughter, and the Yan Daime Hukagi's yet to be born child would be betrothed. The IWA Kunoichi explained. Though due to the banishment of me, things were almost made complicated, but we worked around it, Naruto continued, if I were to marry her, IWA would become allies with the resurrected Yuzushio, and would not target Kanoha. Granted when we first met, Kuro-chan was skeptical of me and wondered if I was worthy of being betrothed to her. So she requested a match between them to determine if he was worthy enough. Akatsuchi chuckled. I felt like it was the whole Nadashiko match all over again. Naruto chuckled as well. Through our spar I learned a lot about Naruto, Kuratsuchi said with a smirk and teased Naruto, he was impulsive, stubborn, and an idiot in many ways. Oh you're gonna make me cry. Naruto said putting on a mock sad face. Kuratsuchi smiled and continued, but I also found out he was a dedicated and strong shinobi who would give his life for his allies and those he cared about. And that was enough to convince me he may be the kind of guy I've been waiting for my whole life. It was the first time I ever saw her speak so highly of a single guy. Akatsuchi teased, only for Kuratsuchi to snap. Shut up. So did you two seal your promise of marriage with a kiss or something much more? Suijetsu asked, while raising his brows multiple times. 
Suijetsu, a guy doesn't just share personal stuff like that when the girl you're talking about is right next to you. Naruto stated. Just asking. Suijetsu asked, with a shrug of his shoulders. We were just finishing up a mission, and you? Kuratsuchi asked. Just passing through and collecting some bounty fee. Naruto answered. Well thanks for the meal. Kuratsuchi smiled. Naruto was about to collect the bill, until Jiraiya intervened, allow me. Thanks, Erosenin. Naruto smiled. No problem. He answered, as he paid for their meal. As they went outside, Naruto spoke up to the IWA shinobi, so do you two have to go so soon? I mean we haven't seen each other in a long time. Well. Kuratsuchi began, until an explosion brought her out of her thoughts. Whoa. The group gasped. What was that? Yugo asked. Karen concentrated and gasped, I'm feeling some chakra signatures up ahead, one of them is extremely large. How large? Jiraiya inquired. Like Naruto's. She answered. Naruto's? Yugo asked in confusion. A Jinchuriki? Suijetsu suggested. I can't imagine it being one of the others. Naruto stated. Any of you think we should check it out? Akatsuchi asked. We? Naruto asked him. Well you asked if we had to go so soon, so now we don't. The IWA ninja replied. So let's go find out what that is together. Kuratsuchi said eagerly. Naruto smirked, then let's go. The whole group took off for the exit of town determined to find out the cause of the explosion. The group followed the explosion out of the town, before reaching the forest area, Karen, what you got? Naruto asked the redhead girl. Two chakra signatures up ahead. Two large ones. She answered. All right. Suijetsu called in excitement. Hold it. Jiraiya called as they pulled to a halt seeing two fighters up ahead. They looked ahead seeing one of the fighters was Kisame Hashigaki and the second was a bit of an old guy with red hair and was wearing a purple uniform, wait a minute, that's Kisame Senpai. Suijetsu called. One of the Akatsuki members. Yugo added. But who's that fighting him? Karen inquired. Kuratsuchi and Akatsuki gasped, it can't be. Akatsuchi gasped. Rushisama? Kuratsuchi gasped. Oh, someone you know? Jiraiya asked. He's an IWA shinobi like one of us. The big guy answered. And the fact Kisame's fighting only means one thing, Naruto deduced, he's a Jinchuriki. Yeah, he harbors the Yanbi. Kuratsuchi added. Shouldn't we help him? Karen asked Naruto. Not yet, we'll jump in if it really looks like he needs us. He answered, as he wanted to see the Yanbi Jinchuriki in action. Meanwhile at the fight, Kisame and Rushi were going at it like true shinobi, I must say you're lasting longer than I expected. I guess I shouldn't expect any less from the Yanbi Jinchuriki. Kisame snickered. His name is Sun, and will not stand idly by for someone like you to take him. Rushi answered. Touching. But dumb. Kisame said, as he started hand signs, Sweitun, Sukadon no Jutsu. He summoned a water shark projectile from a nearby brook and launched it. You underestimate me, boy. Rushi said, as he formed hand signs and spat a blast of lava from his mouth which absorbed the water, turning the lava to rock. Kisame seeing the rock projectile hurtling at him, grabbed Samahata and chopped the incoming projectile into two, show off. Kisame grumbled. That is just a warning, you don't want to see me go all ape on you. Rushi warned the swordsman. Actually, I'd love to see you try. Kisame challenged him. Rushi frowned as he concentrated and suddenly entered his four-tail cloak in its second form. The others watched from the side, as Suijetsu and Yugo watched in amaze, it's just like when Naruto goes into a cloak mode. Yugo gasped. Nice. Suijetsu smirked. Now this sword guy's in for it. Kuratsuchi said smugly. 
Don't be so sure, Naruto cut her off, his opponent is Kisame Hashigaki of the former Seven Swordsmen of Kiri. That sword he wields has the power to assimilate chakra of his opponents and feeds it to him. Meaning the longer this fight goes on the stronger Kisame gets and the weaker Rushi gets. Jiraiya concluded. That's not good. Akatsuki gasped. Naruto squinted around sensing no sign of Itachi anywhere, where could Itachi be now? They watched as the two continued fighting, but discovered Naruto was right. As they fight dragged out, Rushi started getting slower and slower, while Kisame wasn't even breaking a sweat. Suijetsu turned to Naruto, now do we step in? Naruto smirked and answered, now. As Kisame was about to attack the weakened Rushi, he was suddenly pushed back by an unknown force, what? He demanded, until he looked ahead seeing Naruto, Jiraiya, two IWA shinobi and three others who he assumed was the entourage he was briefed about Naruto traveling around with. Hey Kisame, how's it going? Naruto greeted him. Kisame smirked, well, if you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Rushi-sama, are you okay? Kuratsuchi called over. Kuratsuchi, Akatsuchi. He asked. Naruto spoke to the older IWA ninja, save your breath, I'll take it from here. He stepped forward only for Suijetsu to run ahead and block his path. Now just wait one damn minute, Naruto. Suijetsu. Yugo gasped, while Karen face palmed thinking something stupid was going to happen. This is my first time in years meeting Kisame-senpai. I think I deserve a little one-on-one -on -one match with him, don't you? The young swordsman asked his leader. Naruto looked between Suijetsu and Kisame, before answering, I guess so. But five minutes then I'm ending it. So make it count. Suijetsu smirked, five minutes is plenty of time, he stepped forward before drawing his sword, Hey, Kisame-senpai, remember me? Kisame squinted, doth my eyes deceive me, but is that little Suijetsu? I'm not so little anymore, senpai. Suijetsu answered. Indeed, you've grown since the last time I saw you. I'm sure if Mangetsu was here he'd be proud to see you wielding the sword of former swordsman Zabuza. He chuckled. Suijetsu frowned, you'd be wise to chose whose names you mention in my presence. Preferably Mangetsu. Ooh, did I touch a nerve? He teased. Suijetsu frowned, I'm gonna show you I had what it takes to be one of you guys. Then come show me. Kisame beckoned him. Suijetsu charged as the older swordsmen and younger swordsmen clashed with their respective swords. As they clashed, Kisame spoke, keep in mind, Suijetsu, my sword isn't really made for sparing. Yeah, well neither is mine. Suijetsu answered, as he struck back at Kisame. While Suijetsu was keeping Kisame preoccupied, Naruto and the others went over to Rushi, as Akatsuchi helped him up, don't worry, sir, I've got you. He said. Oh, Arigato. He thanked him. Save your breath, you'll need it. Jiraiya stated. Naruto, Karen, and Yugo watched as Suijetsu was fighting Kisame, as Karen spoke. Will you just finish this now, Naruto? Karen asked him in annoyance. Suijetsu still has one minute left. Naruto reminded her. I don't believe this. Karen rolled her eyes. Naruto continued to stand patiently, while the others looked bored or ready to jump in to help Suijetsu, until Naruto spoke, time's up. He flew in and threw a punch through the air aimed at Kisame which sent him flying off his feet and rolling onto the ground. Hey! Suijetsu shouted. Sorry Suijetsu, that was five minutes. He reminded his comrade who sighed. And I was having fun. He grumbled. Sorry, but we can't afford to drag this out, Naruto answered, before looking at Kisame who got up, so where's Itachi? I should hope he'd be on his way here after hearing my roustabout with the other Jinchuriki over there. The shark man answered. Kisame, I'm giving you an option disband from the Akatsuki organization and join my cause. What? He asked. I can end your life with a snap of my finger, and you can't deny that. Naruto warned him. And I don't. So then,
Will you join? Kisame scowled, I'd rather die in honor than join my enemy. Wake up, Kisame. The Akatsuki organization has dropped like flies. Do you think you guys can stand a chance with me around? Kisame wanted to answer, but realized he had nothing to reply with, I thought so. Join me, Kisame. Because I don't want to have to kill you. Do it. Kisame replied bitterly. What? He asked. Kill me. I can't fight you and I certainly can't return in failure. Death is all I have now. Kisame shouted. Naruto frowned, is that your final answer? It is. He answered. Naruto shook his head, I almost feel sorry for you. He held his hand out, and Kisame's neck suddenly snapped. He fell to the ground lifeless with his hand releasing the handle for Samahata. Is he? Kuratsuchi asked. Yes. Jiraiya nodded. Naruto watched as Samahata came to life and slunk to Kisame and appeared to be mourning the loss of its former master, this is what he wanted. He levitated Samahata away from Kisame and looked to Suijetsu, I understand you want to collect the remaining seven swords, but Samahata being sentient chooses its wilders. So until you find it a worthy carrier, it'll remain locked away. He sealed it into a scroll. I understand. Suijetsu answered, knowing full well about Samahata's abilities. Naruto approached Kisame's corpse, you may have cowered out of facing me or the Akatsuki, but I'll still give you a proper send-off. He lit a match and dropped it on Kisame's cloak which caught fire as he burned. When Kisame's body was nothing but a pile of ash, the wind picked up and it all drifted away with it. Jiraiya spoke up, let's get back. Obliging, they all went back to the town to take it easy. Once back in town they were inside one of the rooms at an inn, as Rushi was lying on a bed, before sitting up, I'm getting too old for this. As long as you're kicking you can never be too old for anything. Jiraiya stated, and Rushi chuckled. Rushi-sama, how did you get into a brawl against the scourge of Kiri? Kuratsuchi asked. He followed my chakra trail with his sword. He eventually found me meditating in the forest outside this town. One thing led to another and then boom, you guys showed up. You're lucky we did. Suijetsu answered. Naruto approached, so your name's Rushi, huh? Yes, and you are. I'm Naruto, and like you I'm also a Jinchuriki. You don't say. Yes, so you have the Yanbi sealed inside you. Yes, and what has fate blessed you with? Rushi inquired. I have the Kyubi but his name's Kurama. Well my bijou is son Goku. I'd like to meet him, personally. Naruto smirked. You would? Sure. Naruto held his fist out. Rushi realizing what Naruto was trying to do, formed a fist and the two bumped them. Suddenly they found themselves in the void with their respective bijou right behind them. Naruto looked at the Yanbi known as son Goku. He was a giant red four-tailed gorilla, so that's son. He asked. Correct. The large ape bellowed, I am the handsome monkey king of the water screen cave, the king of the sage monkeys, bestowed with the dharma name of son by the sage of the six paths. I am son Goku, the great sage equaling heaven. He announced with a prideful laugh. Kurama rolled his eyes, will you cease with the dramatics, son? It's quite annoying. Sun looked to the fox and spoke, you don't have to be such a wet blanket, Kurama. Hey don't take it personal, that's how greeted your other siblings. Naruto spoke up. I can believe that. Sun answered. Still it is good to see you again, Sun. Kurama admitted. Yeah, you too. So Rushi, you mind telling me more about yourself? You know Jinchuriki to Jinchuriki. Naruto requested. Very well, Rushi answered, as he sat down with Naruto, I became a Jinchuriki more than forty years ago. Like all Jinchuriki I was also looked down upon and feared by the villagers of my own home. When I became a shinobi I eventually left IWA to further understand and control Sun's power with him helping me. It was a peaceful life. 
Over time I eventually learned how to work together with Sun here. And now I am in full control with his chakra. Same for me and Kurama. Naruto admitted. So how did a Jinchuriki like yourself come to be here of all places? Rushi wondered. Have I got a story for you? Naruto answered, as he explained his story, leaving Sun and Rushi in surprise. Oh my, to be thrown out of your village like that? He asked. I don't blame the Hokage. I blame those old fools who overruled her authority with their own words and all, Naruto answered, I may never be allowed in Konoha again, but I still hold all those I care for in the village close. I do as well. Rushi admitted, Unki's little granddaughter was such a sweetie when she was younger. I can believe that. Naruto admitted. And Daidara, he was an explosive one. Rushi chuckled. Naruto shook his head, don't I know it. Listen, Daidara has been. Yes, I know. He answered. You do, how? Call it an instinct. He answered. Right. Well it was nice to get to know you, son. Naruto called. And nice to see you, Naruto. And you too, Kurama. Likewise. Kurama agreed, as their link ended. Naruto and Rushi woke up, seeing everyone was eating, hey when did this come in? Naruto asked in surprise. A moment ago. Akatsuchi answered. Well move over. Naruto called as he slid in to join them in dinner. That night, Naruto was on top of the inn's roof looking up at the sky, until Kuratsuchi approached, Hey Naruto, everyone's going to the open air baths. You coming? I'll be along in a minute, Kuro-chan. He answered, while deep in thought. Is something wrong? She asked, as she took a seat beside him. Just thinking. About what? Akatsuki. I killed one of the last remaining members of the organization. Now there are only three left. And once you defeat them the ninja land and the Jinchuriki will be safe right? She asked. I'd hope to believe so. But then again, someone else may come along and attempt to take the Jinchuriki to use their powers for their own. I just wonder if it's meant to be for me and all my fellow Jinchuriki to be in hiding or on the run from madmen like the Akatsuki. Don't say that, Naruto, she interrupted him, for as long as I've known you, I realized you'd never think twice or otherwise about being accepted as Jinchuriki. You said so yourself Killer B and Yujito of Kumo have gained their village's respect, as did the Kazika Gi who was also a Jinchuriki. I believe you can also find peace just as those three did eventually. Naruto smiled, thanks, Kuro-chan. I needed that. She smiled, anytime. And thanks for helping Rishisama. She pulled him into a kiss, which he returned. When they parted, she headed back into the inn to join Karen in the open-air baths. As Naruto went back to pondering he spoke up, have you been around here long? Appearing at his side was Itachi, long enough. He answered, before taking a seat next to Naruto. So did you really allow Kisame to handle Rushi on his own? Naruto asked. Kisame wanted it that way. I see. What about you? What will you do now that you no longer have a partner to hide secrets from? And now only two members are left of the Akatsuki organization. I'm leaving it now. He answered. Naruto looked to him, really? Yes. With Abito gone, and Kisame dead I have no reason to continue keeping this facade up. Itachi explained, however, I know eventually Pain and Conan will seek me out and try to do away with me. So wherever I go it has to be someplace they would never think of for me to go. Problem is, I've been with them for so long, they'd know exactly my kind of tactics. He sighed. Naruto smiled, but they don't know your ties with me. So I know a place where you can hide out. Where? Itachi asked. The ruins of Yuzushio. They wouldn't think you of all people would chose a place like that. HM, Itachi pondered, it may actually be perfect. Arigato Naruto, for carrying the burden of my secret and the secret of the Uchiha. 
Well it's nice to see among Uchiha you were actually a nice one not bent on either village domination or vengeance. Naruto replied, and Itachi let out an amused chuckle, before asking. Naruto, do you still Obito's eyes? Yes, I've kept them close to me just in case. Good. Even though Abito was corrupted his eyes are very important, Itachi answered, if it were me I would have destroyed them, but you could probably make for better use of them. Better use? Are you suggesting I should? Just food for thought, Naruto, Itachi stood up, I'll catch you later. He vanished. Naruto smiled, later, Itachi. He said before he stood up and went back inside the inn to join the guys in the open air bath. Meanwhile in Amage Cure, the rain poured down upon the village. Inside the center tower was Pain looking out onto the village, until Conan entered, Nagato. Pin turned around, yes. I've just received intel, Kisame has fallen in battle. Against the Jinchuriki? He asked. Yes, but not the Yanbi. Who? The Kyubi. She answered. Naruto. He gasped. Yes. And I don't think Itachi's coming back. What do you mean? He was nowhere near Kisame's point. She explained. Pain frowned, now it's just you and I, Conan. Yes, what do we do now? We should have done this from the start, Pain began, we need Naruto. Naruto. But we can't see the Kyubi without the others first. Conan reminded him. Not to worry, we'll simply play Naruto into our hands and make him collect the Jinchuriki for us. And when the time comes we'll convince him that high sacrifice will be for the greater good of the ninja land. And how can we convince him? You forget Conan, I am very persuasive. That may be, but how can we find him? She asked. We won't, he answered, making the woman confused, we're gonna bring him to us. How? We're going to attack Kanoha. He answered. Kanoha. But why would he come when he was thrown out of the village? He may have been exiled, but if my hunches are correct he would gladly go anywhere to help those close to him. Even to the village that kicked him out, at least for those remaining who care for him. I understand. Conan nodded. Good. Prepare yourself, we will head out when the time is right. He ordered. She nodded and left, as Pain continued to look out onto the rainy village. Naruto, you've been a thorn in the Akatsuki's plans far too long. It's time you joined the side you should have been on. He thought to himself. At Yuzushio one night inside one of the not-so-demolished buildings, Naruto, Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo were showing Itachi around. The older Uchiha saw while the building itself may not be in the best shape, Naruto and his team fixed the inside up so it looked homey, complete with a table, chairs, beds, and the other essentials. Well Itachi, make yourself at home. Naruto said. Arigato. Itachi answered as he sat on a chair to take a load of. Play Saint the Lihua in, but take what you can get, Suijetsu began, before turning to the older boy, though let's be honest, you're better off at the Lihua in. You're a riot, Suijetsu. Karen rolled her eyes. Why thank you? Suijetsu answered. That wasn't a compliment. Hey, no fighting before dinner. Naruto scolded them, as he and Yugo began making dinner. Soon the five of them were seated at the table enjoying dinner, this is very good. Itachi said, as he ate some rice. Thanks, Yugo and I make quite a meal. Naruto answered. So what are we doing tomorrow? Suijetsu asked their leader. Naruto looked taken aback, huh, you know I haven't even thought about it. Why don't we kick back and relax here? We deserve a break from all the traveling and fighting we've been doing lately. I'm all for that. Yugo agreed. Same here. Karen added. I guess. Suijetsu answered. I could use a break myself, Itachi put in, after traveling constantly with Kisame and being on high alert it feels good to relax for once. Exactly. Naruto nodded and as soon as they finished dinner, Yugo and Itachi did the dishes. 
That night, as each of them was asleep on their own futon, Naruto was sleeping peacefully suddenly he was twitching in his sleep. He suddenly saw Pain and his other bodies on their way to Kanoha before entering the village. He suddenly woke up in his bed with a gasp. He got up and walked to the building's window to look out. As he looked up at the moonlight, he thought to Kurama, was that a dream or a vision? I do not know Naruto. After all you've gotten them so many times it's hard to determine what's a dream and what's a vision. I know, Kurama. But what if that wasn't a dream? Naruto, I think you've been at all this fighting for so long you're starting to worry yourself. Kurama suggested. Maybe, but still. Look try and get some sleep, and don't think about the Akatsuki for once. Okay. He said in reluctance, before returning to bed. The very next morning, after Naruto and his group had breakfast, they were relaxing, as Naruto was leaning against a wall, didn't I tell you guys taking the day off today was a good idea? Countless times. Suijetsu answered, with a roll of his eyes. Naruto chuckled, until he froze and started getting another premonition. It was the same one he had last night featuring Pain and his other paths on their way to Kanoha. He suddenly snapped out of his vision and screamed, N.O. Oh. This startles his four comrades, Naruto. Karen gasped. What's wrong? Yugo asked in concern. It was a vision. He gasped. What vision? Itachi inquired. Last night I thought I was having a dream, but it was really one of my visions. What did you see? Suijetsu got up in curiosity. It was pain and his other bodies. They're on their way to Kanoha. What? They gasped. Itachi scowled, it looks like Pain's decided to take another approach into locating you. By bringing you to him. So the thing's a trap to lure him back to the village. Karen inquired. It must be. Well, he's just wasting his time, Suijetsu put in, there's no way Naruto's gonna come crawling up to him. I am. He answered. Huh? Suijetsu asked in confusion. I can't just stay here and let him destroy all of Kanoha. Naruto, after all that village did to you. Suijetsu reminded him. It wasn't the village itself, it was those who got me banished. He corrected the swordsman. Even so, why help those who are the reason you don't live in your village anymore? I'm not doing it for those who got me banished, but for all the innocent lives pain will take just to get to me. Can't your own allies from Kanoha handle it? Suijetsu asked. If it were against any of the other members, yes, Itachi noted, but against pain, over half of them are out of their league. Naruto looked at his team, I'm sorry guys, but I have to stop him. Not alone you're not, Yugo stood up, I'm coming with you. So am I, Karen agreed. Suijetsu sighed, I don't want to be left out, so count me in. Guys, Naruto gasped, you know it will be far more dangerous than any battle we've been in. Still not stopping us. Karen answered. Naruto smiled before looking at Itachi, what about you, Itachi? Itachi shook his head, I can't set foot in Kanoha any more than you are allowed now. Besides, I think you will do fine without my help. Naruto smiled, okay then. If you haven't heard word from us by sundown then you may assume. Don't worry, I have confidence you will pull through. Itachi smiled. Got that right. Suijetsu smirked. Come on, guys. Naruto called as they jumped onto the carpet and Naruto levitated it out the window as they flew off for Kanoha. Itachi watched them fly off into the distance before thinking to himself, good luck, Naruto. Meanwhile in Kanoha, the members of the Kanoha barrier team gasped, as the head member spoke, some intruders have entered the village through the barrier. We need to report to Tsunade-sama right away. Another suggested as they were about to inform her, until a giant orange centipede poofed in front of them. You're not going anywhere. A voice said, as they looked up and saw what Pain identified as his animal path. That robe, it's a member of the Akatsuki. One of the barrier teams gasped. Move. The head member ordered, as they jumped away before the centipede could strike them. 
I guess this will require some more assistance. The animal path said, as it went through hand signs and summoned into the village a giant dog and a giant rhino. The two beasts started laying siege on the village, taking out any ninja trying to cross their paths or stop them. All over the village, Kanoha shinobi were fending off against pain in his path bodies, while some of the younger shinobi were leading the civilians to safety. Sadly to say, the Kanoha shinobi despite their best efforts were barely making an impact on all of Pain's six paths. From atop a rooftop stood Hamura and Koharu, looking out into the village in pure horror. Their own village's shinobi were being killed off one by one BYT probably one of the most powerful ninja in the land. You know why this is happening don't you? Koharu asked Hamura. He's obviously trying to lure Naruto here to take him. But he won't come will he? The woman asked. After all we did to him, I wouldn't be surprised. Hamura sighed, as the two stood in guilt. Who would have guessed one little act would result in this? It's happened before and now it's come to bite us back again. The man answered. It seems in our years we were the only ones out of our team who lost their way. Indeed. Hiruzen was the only one of us to follow in the ways of our sensei and show Dai Mesama. While we let the thought of preserving peace through risky actions blind us. And that shall be your downfall. A voice said, as they turned to see Pain's initial body standing before them. Before they could respond, Pain extended his arms out, as two metal rods extend from the sleeves and impale the two elder folk through their hearts. The two coughed up blood before their eyes rolled into the back of their heads and went limp. Pain dropped the two to the ground and looked out seeing all of the shinobi desperately trying to defend the village, Naruto, I know you will come. Tsunade and Jiraiya stood on the roof of the administration building, Jiraiya, we have no choice now. Right, we need to go help. Jiraiya said, as the remaining two Sanin members were prepared to enter the fray, until a voice spoke up. Don't worry about it. They looked up seeing a carpet flying over their heads. Dropping down from it was Naruto and his team, we'll take it from here. Naruto said. Naruto, what are you doing here? Tsunade gasped. You know the only reason Pain is here is because. Jiraiya scolded him for coming, but Naruto cut him off. I'm not about to let myself be safe at the cost of all of your lives. I'll put an end to the Akatsuki once and for all, he concentrated and entered in full chakra mode, guys, help protect the villagers. I'm going after the pains. Hi. The three took off, while Naruto summoned multiple clones, that flew off. In the village, Kakashi, Sakura, and Team Guy were squaring off against two of Pain's bodies identified as the Human Path and Hell Path. Kakashi with his Sharingan I exposed looked at his limit, along with Guy, Lee, and Niji. Sakura was trying to heal them, but wasn't fast enough. Now we will send you to Hell. Human Path bellowed, as the two were about to attack, but were suddenly launched away from them and crashed into a wall. What? Ten Ten gasped, until two of Naruto's clones floated down to the ground level. Are we too late? One asked. Naruto. Sakura gasped. You came. Kakashi asked in shock. I'll always come back when my friends need me, the second answered. The two paths got up and stood their ground, Naruto, so you've come at last. Hell Path said. I've been waiting for you. Human Path added. I bet you have, because I've been waiting to do this. The two used chakra arms to each conjure a raisin shuriken into their hands, raisin shuriken. They launched the two jutsus at the two paths. The raisin shurikens expanded which consumed the two paths. Naruto destroyed them. Lee gasped. We owe him our lives. Niji smiled. Elsewhere in the village, Asuma, Shikamaru, Ino, and Chuji were squaring off against Pain's Azura path which was firing lasers and blasters from all over its body, this is more troublesome than I thought. Shikamaru said, as he dodged some of the lasers. No time for that, Shikamaru. Ino said. She's right, we just have to hold our ground. Asuma agreed, as he held his knuckle chakra knives. But for how long? 
Chuji inquired. Long enough for me to arrive. A third Naruto clone arrived, it's Naruto. Ino gasped. No way. Shikamaru gasped. You can take five, guys. I can handle this one. Naruto said as he stared the Azura path down. Azura path started firing laser blasts at Naruto, who started running around and dodging the lasers. Naruto while running to the one path, used his chakra arms to conjure an Udama Rasengan and thrust it into the path causing it to blow up, three down, and three more to go. Hinata, Kiba, and Shino were leading some villagers to safety, until Pain's hungry ghost path arrived, come on, guys. We can take him. Kiba said confidently, only for Shino to reply. Highly illogical, Kiba. What, so you're just gonna do nothing? Kiba barked. Guys, we shouldn't argue like this now. Hinata ordered them, but saw the path charging right for them. The three braced themselves, only for the path to suddenly freeze in place, and all the black rods in its body to suddenly pop out of their places like corks. When all the rods were out, the body fell down lifeless, what just happened? Kiba asked, while Akameru was just as shocked. I happened. Naruto's clone appeared. Naruto. Hinata cheered. Figures. Kiba rolled his eyes. What are you doing here? Shino asked. Saving yours and the village's hides of course. Well thanks. Kiba admitted. No problem. Now if you'll excuse me, I better go. He flew off. Pain's animal path continued summoning more giant creatures to attack the shinobi, leaving behind many defeated corpses. The path suddenly saw the real Naruto appear before him, I'm afraid you and your pets are gonna have to go. I think not. The animal path answered, as all the creatures he summoned went at Naruto, but the shinobi flew around them, and dodging their attacks, before Naruto hovered above them. Not even your summonings can protect you from me. He flew away from the summonings as his chakra arms were forming a Rasengan in his palm, and it extended forward nailing the animal path. When the path was destroyed all the summonings vanished. That about does it for them. Naruto said, as all his clones dispelled. Naruto. Naruto looked up seeing the main pain looking down on him from high up in the air, you. He flew up to pain's level. You've skillfully managed to take out my bodies, but now it's time I take you out. Pain announced, Chibaku Tensei, bursting Earth Celestia body. He launched a dark sphere into the sky which started taking in matter from the ground until it was about the size of the moon. Whoa, boy. Naruto gasped. Now, you are mine. Pain called, as Naruto suddenly felt himself being drawn up into it. He tried flying away, but the force pulling him was so strong, Kurama, we need the Bija bomb. You got it. Kurama called, as Naruto formed chakra around him in the form of Kurama's head which started taking in chakra until he was ready to fire it, Bijudama. He fired it at the large rock which exploded upon contact. No. Pain cried as he shielded himself from the incoming debris. Gotcha. Naruto called, as Pain saw Naruto who was out of chakra mode, and suddenly in sage mode, while hurling a single massive Rasengan right at him, Senpu, Cho Udama Rasengan. He shoved it into the final path sending it flying downward and crashing onto the earth. From another part of the village, Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo seeing the falling body knew something was up, come on, let's go. Yugo called, as they hurried. Naruto touched down to the ground, and saw the final path lying in a crater. He used his psychic to pop all the rods out of the body, Naruto. Karen called, as the three arrived. Are you okay, man? Suijetsu asked. I'm fine. Whoa, is that him? Suijetsu asked seeing the body. Yes, but I'm not done here, he picked up a chakra rod, and tossed it to Karen, hold on to that and track the user's location. Um, okay, Karen said, as she held the rod between her hands, and started concentrating. Suddenly she could sense the chakra from the rod was coming from another direction out in the forest in the village, I got a lock. Where? 
Naruto asked. That way. She pointed in the direction of the forest. All right, I'm on it. Naruto was about to fly off, only for Suijetsu to speak up. Wait a minute, you're going off to face the real pain alone. I have to, I'm the only one who can possibly hope to understand him. You're not making any sense. Karen said. I'll let you know later. Naruto answered as he flew off. Suddenly Tsunade and Jiraiya appeared, what happened? Jiraiya asked. Where's Naruto? Tsunade inquired. He's gone off to see the real pain. Yugo answered. The two Sanin gasped as they looked out seeing a faint Naruto flying off into the forest, Naruto. They thought in worry. Naruto flew through the forest before happening upon a single tree. He concentrated and returned to sage mode sensing the presence of two individuals inside it. He realized it was made entirely out of paper, and went inside. He looked and saw Conan standing next to a mechanical walker with the true mastermind behind the six paths, Nagato, Naruto. The redhead man greeted him. Pain, or do you prefer Nagato? Naruto asked. So you know my real name? He asked. Yeah, I know you and Conan from Erosenin. You two were his students once. Nagato frowned, all in the past. A past which I buried. Look, whatever you have planned you should just save yourself the trouble, because it's all over. How wrong you are, Nagato replied, it'll never be over. The war between all of the ninja lands will continue so long as hate exists in the world. I've made it my goal to eliminate that hate, and I've come this close. Which is why I request you join us. What? Naruto gasped. Join us Naruto, and we can bring peace to the ninja lands. I'd rather rot in hell than help you in your psycho plot. Naruto growled. There is that hate, the kind that brews from war. You saw what damage I caused this village and the casualties that resulted. You do anything to me, and that will only strengthen the seeds of war. Nagato warned him. Naruto frowned at Nagato, you seriously must have had a messed up life. But I'll find out truly why. He looked into Nagato's Rinnegan eyes, and suddenly saw the man's life flash before his eyes. He could see Nagato's poor and sad childhood, his time with his friends Conan and Yahiko, training under Jiraiya, and their original Akatsuki organization coming together to promote peace. Suddenly he saw through the memories of Danzo Shimura standing beside AIM's former leader Hanzo, who double-crossed Nagato resulting in Yahiko's death, and Nagato's ascendance into pain. He saw the remaining memories following was all his exploits while leading the new Akatsuki and all he did in Kanoha as of the day. When the memories ended, he spoke up, whoa. Nagato strained, while Conan looked worried, Nagato, what's wrong? She turned to Naruto, what did you do to him? I did nothing but look through his memories. Naruto replied. You what? Nagato gasped. Yes. Now I see things through your POV. So now you know why I've done all this? Nagato asked. Yes, but this wasn't your best course of action, Naruto replied, it's sad what happened to Yahiko, all because Danzo talked Hanzo into betraying your trust. Still, you turning into who you are today makes you no better than them. Erosenin believed that I would one day be able to find peace, and I'm not going to tarnish his words by ruthlessly killing you. Nagato scowled, that's it. After all that you're just going to do nothing but expect me to wait for peace. There will never be true peace so long as war exists in this cursed world. Naruto smiled, in that case I'll break the curse. If there's such a thing as peace I'll find it. I'm not giving up. Nagato suddenly taken aback by Naruto's words gasped, those words. Those are. Yes, the words used in Ero Senen's very first novel, Naruto nodded, he believed that it was the first start on the path to peace. And he credited you Nagato as the one who provided him with such inspiration. He made the character modeled after you, and I was named after him. Nagato was in shock, can this just be coincidence? He asked himself, while Conan wasn't sure what to say. Ero Senen's book and my name are both precious to me, 
and I will not forsake them. I will find a way to bring peace to the ninja land somehow. I know it won't be easy and will require me to kill someone, but still if peace really does exist then I will search for it and won't stop until I find it. So from one disciple to another you must have faith in me. After Naruto's speech, Nagato started to crack a smile, you know you remind me of my younger self. You truly are a curious one, much like how I used to be. I wasn't able to continue to believe in Jiraiya Sensei's words, but your words have caught my attention. I think this time I will believe in you, Naruto. He put his hands together and formed a hand sign, Geta Rinne Tensei no Jutsu. Nagato, no. Conan cried. What's going on? Naruto asked. That jutsu allows Nagato to revive the dead. But it requires a large amount of chakra. I don't think he has enough to survive this ordeal. Conan feared as she watched Nagato's hair turn white. It's okay Conan. I've done a lot of terrible things in the past. I pray that I can find redemption in this act. Nagato explained as he strained. So you're reviving everyone in the village? Naruto gasped. Yes, they're slowly waking up. If I make a request, I could see you killed two people. And I request they stay dead as a way for them to live with their guilt. Naruto requested. Nagato realizing who Naruto was talking about answered, very well. I accept your request, but I wish to make one to you as well. What's that? When my heart gives out, I want you to take my Rinnegan eyes. What? Naruto gasped. Nagato. Conan gasped. I feel the eyes of the sage will be safer in your very hands, Nagato answered as he just about finished his jutsu, I wonder if this was somehow planned from the start. If us meeting and having this conversation was meant to take place. I'd like to believe it was meant to be. Don't you, Naruto? Nagato smiled, goodbye Conan, and goodbye Naruto. His eyes slowly closed, as his body fell limp. Nagato. Conan gasped, seeing the last of her closest friends dead, while Naruto himself looked on in remorse of his newest friend who died after they made peace. Afterward, Conan dispersed the paper tree and wrapped the bodies of Nagato and Yahiko's body in paper, so you're going back to aim? Naruto asked. Yes. And I'm taking my friends back with me. Still with both of them dead, I'm still returning alone. Naruto smiled and approached her, you'll never be alone, Conan. As long as you hold these two close to your heart then they'll always be with you. And since I'm following their path, I'm a part of them as well making me a part of you too. Conan realizing how true that was smiled, yes. You're right. And remember if you ever need someone to talk to, just seek me out. Conan embraced him, Naruto, Arigato. Naruto pecked her on the cheek and answered, you're welcome. After they broke their embrace, Conan blushed at Naruto's peck, before speaking, I trust you will take good care of Nagato's eyes? I promise. Conan smiled, then I'll see you around. She created paper wings onto her back and flew off while her two paper-wrapped friends were floating at her side. Naruto seeing his work was done, headed back to the village. Upon exiting the forest, he saw standing before him was his three teammates, his old friends from Kanoha, and just about every occupant in the village waiting for him, even those who were killed but revived by Nagato were present. What the? He asked. Welcome back, Naruto. Kakashi approached. Why is everyone here? He asked him. We told them all you went to face the real pain, and you know how fast gossip spreads. Suijetsu explained. Suddenly children ran up to Naruto bombarding him with questions about what happened, while all his friends came over to him to congratulate him as well. Naruto through all their congrats saw all of Kanoha was cheering his name. He looked at them in surprise and thought, are these really the same villagers who once looked down upon my existence? So it seems, Kurama thought, though how many do you think are just kissing up to you, hoping you'll forget how they treated you? Oh, shut it, Kurama. I'll worry about that later. Right now I'm just glad everything's over. He thought back, until a voice broke him out of thought. Naruto Uzumaki. So much for being over.
Kurama thought. Suddenly appearing before him were seven Umbu, which made the children run to their parents, and Naruto's friends and team back away with Naruto in the middle. One of the Umbu spoke up, you're under arrest. Naruto rolled his eyes and groaned, you gotta be fucking kidding me. What do you mean under arrest? Naruto asked in outrage. You violated your banishment by stepping foot in Kanoha. One of the Umbu explained. Hey, I just saved this village and probably your asses from utter destruction and you're giving me this shit now. The parents covered their kids' ears. Law is law. Another Umbu answered. You will stand down this moment. Tsuna day orders. Forget it, Basan, Naruto interrupted her, it's obvious these mooks aren't your registered Umbu. They're Danzos. And speaking of I'd like to have a word with him. Already here, Naruto, another voice said as Danzo approached, with his umbu making way for him, did you wish to say something to me? Drop the act you old crone, Naruto frowned, it's bad enough you got me banished from the village, but you sent your own flunkies after me countless times just to have me killed. The villagers gasped at Naruto's accusations, while Danzo stood his ground, and what proof do you have of this? Plenty of proof, but first I need to look into you. Naruto said as he looked into Danzo's visible eye and saw the old man's life flash in his mind. He saw exactly what drove Danzo into becoming bitter and risky. He saw his POV when he coaxed Hanzo into betraying Nagato, the full conversation between him, the council, and San Daime about what to do with Naruto the night he was born, the secret meetings with Itachi, and all the orders he had given his root umbu to track Naruto down and kill him. When Naruto snapped out of it he gasped, Whoa, dude, you're worse than I thought. What do you mean? Tsunade asked. Naruto turned to her and announced, Everyone, I'm about to share some real interesting history with all of you. He concentrated and looked on at everyone in the village as he fed them the images he saw through Danzo, leaving out anything involving the Uchiha promising Itachi not to let the Uchiha name be tainted. When he stopped, everyone was in confusion, as Ino spoke to her friends, what we all saw, was that real? It was. Jiraiya answered, as he frowned seeing what Danzo started leading to Nagato turning corrupted. Naruto announced, Kanoha, this man Danzo Shimura is guilty of several accounts of treason against Kanoha and those of other nations. As you've witnessed he coaxed Hanzo of the salamander in Amigekure into betraying the one known as Nagato which led him into becoming pain, all for his selfish desire to become Hokage. Don't believe him. Danzo shouted and turned to his umbu, stop him. The umbu ran to attack Naruto, only for Jiraiya to use his swamp underworld to trap the shinobi and pull them down into it. Naruto seeing Jiraiya saved him from an interruption continued, and even after then he continued acting in the shadows using unauthorized missions to strengthen his forces, leading to many other lesser nations fearful of Kanoha. You also attempted to convince Gigi to take me under your wing and turn me into a living weapon, the same way Suna messed up Gara. And then when it all came down to it, once you got me banished you thought since you couldn't use me as a weapon you decided to have me murdered. That was to keep you out of the Akatsuki's hands. Danzo retorted. By killing me. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Those are desperate words of someone who's never had hope in anything. The Naidame Hokage was right to name Gigi Hokage instead of you. He mocked him. Danzo frowned, you're trying my patience, boy. Good, because thanks to me everyone knows exactly the kind of man you are. You probably just altered those past memories to frame me. Danzo accused. Wishful thinking, however I cannot manipulate memories into false ones. I can merely see them and project them to others as they come. Though this was my first time doing that second one, actually. He admitted. Tsunade, Jiraiya, Shizune, the Jonin, and Umbu Stuff before Danzo, games up, Danzo, Tsunade began, you lied, deceived, cheated, and tarnished all that Kanoha stands for. Danzo frowned, and suddenly out from his shirt appeared an arm came out, but looked pale. He started hand signs, Futon, Shinku Gyoku. He fired numerous wind bullets at them. Everyone but Naruto jumped aside, as he flew up to avoid the attack, 
nice try, Danzo, but you're slow. He suddenly went into full chakra mode. I have one last chance. Danzo was about to rip the bandages off his face, but suddenly found himself frozen. Naruto levitated him up to his level in the air. Naruto squinted his eyes and saw a familiar tomo in Danzo's socket. That doesn't belong to you. He used his psychic to make the eye pop out of the socket and just popped like a balloon. My eye. Danzo cried, as he closed his empty socket with bits of blood leaking out it. Naruto while still keeping Danzo airborne, held up his index finger with little chakra arms creating a miniature raisin shuriken on the tip, say ah. He used his psychic to force Danzo's mouth open. Naruto launched the miniature raisin shuriken into Danzo's mouth and forced him to close it. The jutsu started piercing Danzo's body from the inside out, mostly in the head. Unable to survive the attack his body fell limp. Naruto powered down, and lowered himself and the deceased Danzo to the ground. He looked seeing everyone around him was in shock. Suddenly they started cheering and applauding him for putting an end to someone who might have been the death of their village. Naruto smiled and looked at Tsunade, see to it this body is burned. And I expect a meeting with everyone later. Tsunade nodded, and Naruto decided to take a walk. It wasn't long before all of Kanoha was making repairs to the everything that was damaged by pain. He thought to himself, it actually feels nice to walk in the village again. Feeling nostalgic, Naruto. Kurama thought. Yeah, I guess I am. He admitted. Three years since you've been here. Aside from the construction, place doesn't look too different. Well there's that. Naruto looked up and saw Tsunade's face on the Kagi mountain. Naruto. He snapped out of his thoughts and saw Kanoamaru, Moegi, and Udon. Hey, you guys. Naruto smiled as the three not-so-young shinobi embraced him. We missed you, Aniki. Kanoamaru smiled. I missed you guys too. Red hair, it suits you. Moegi said. Thanks. So are you coming back? Udon asked. Well that hasn't been decided yet. I hope so. I missed not having you around. Kanoamaru said. Ah, you're making me blush. Naruto chuckled. Well we better get going. Ebisu sensei has a job for us. Kanoamaru said. See ya. The three called as they headed off. Naruto smiled, and looked around before summoning a single clone, head back to Yuzushio, and inform Itachi of what happened. The clone nodded before flying off. Naruto. He then saw Sakura and Kakashi approach. Hey, you guys. Tsunade-sama sent us to fetch you for that meeting. Kakashi said. Well then, let's go. He said as they went to the administration building. Later in the Hokage's office, Naruto was standing before all his old friends, his team, Jiraiya, Iruka, Shizune, and Tsunade, Naruto, in light of all these events you have proven that you really are a dedicated Kanoha shinobi. And with the passing of Danzo, Hamura, and Koharu I'm proud to say I am revoking your banishment. Really? He gasped. She smiled, yes, Naruto. You can come home now. Naruto was in pure shock, while all his friends noticed, hey, what's wrong? Ten Ten asked. Naruto must be so happy he's lost for words. Lee suggested. It's not that, Lee, Naruto replied, believe me, I'm happy to hear that I'm no longer a banished ninja, but the fact is I don't think I can stay here. What? They all gasped. What do you mean? Irika asked. I know I've missed this place, and I've missed all of you. But I found a new home, a home I'm trying to bring back to life. Yuzushio. Jiraiya nodded. Yes, I want to restore it to its former glory. For my mom, and for all the Uzumaki members before me. Karen nodded in agreement. Naruto, Sakura gasped, is that really what you want? Naruto nodded, it is, Sakura. It's all I've wanted for these last three years. Tsunade smiled, well then, we shouldn't stop you. So then? 
You may continue to restore Yuzushio, and we of Kanoha will help you in any way we can. The Hokage finished. Thanks, Basan. He smiled. Later, he was with Suijetsu, Karen, and Yugo at Ichiraku, having some lunch, oh, I miss this ramen. Naruto salivated, while savoring every bite. And we missed having our favorite customer here. Tuchi added. And now you're a hero. I am put in. You know we helped too. Suijetsu spoke up. Right, you three helped get us and everyone to safety. Tuchi remembered. Thank you, all. I am thank them. You're welcome. Yugo nodded. Naruto after finishing his meal paid, and spoke up, see you guys soon. There's something I need to do. He headed off. At a prison in Kanoha, Naruto approached one cell with a guard. The guard tapped the bars, Sasuke Uchiha, you have a visitor. Sitting up formed the bed inside the cell was Sasuke Uchiha, who Naruto hasn't seen since the day he brought him back to Kanoha the day he was banished. He was wearing a Kanoha's jailer's uniform, and his hair was mullet length. When the youngest Uchiha saw who was outside his cell, all he could do was smirk, Naruto. Sasuke. Naruto replied, as the guard gave them some alone time. I heard three years ago after our fight you were banished. Sasuke began. Yes, I was. He confirmed. So why were you here? Basan was finally able to lift the banishment passed on me, now that the three members of the corrupted council is dead. Now she's looking to get new members on board. Honest and hardworking members. I see. But the reason why I was here was because the village was under attack. So that's what was going on outside. Sasuke realized. I defeated the threat and now the village has welcomed me back. Lucky you. Sasuke said dryly. But I didn't come here to gloat. I came here to let you know this all could have been avoided if you didn't let your ego and inferiority cloud your mind. I agree. Sasuke replied. I know you don't like to be lectured on it, but I think for once you should stop and hear me. Wait, what did you say? I agree with you, Naruto. You agree with me, just like that? He asked in disbelief. Spending three years locked up with my chakra sealed off gave me a chance to reflect on my actions, and see just what a fool I've been. Sasuke admitted with his head dropping down in shame, Kakashi was right about me. Being too obsessed with revenge would eventually drive me to losing everything. And if I succeeded, I'd have nothing left. Now look where I am. If I couldn't beat you with Orokamara's power, how could I even hope to have a chance against Itachi? For what it's worth you probably would eventually gain the strength to have fought him. Thanks, I guess. So what are you gonna do now, become Hokage now that you're welcomed back in Kanoha? On the contrary I'm going to establish my own ninja village and become its leader. Maybe if I make it strong enough it could become a sixth higher nation. Well, good luck with that. But Naruto, could you promise me something slash? Sure Sasuke, what is it? If you ever come across Itachi, kill him for me, Sasuke said, while Naruto gasped in his thoughts at his request, please, do this for me and my family. He pleaded. Naruto thought about this, and knew Itachi never wanted Sasuke to find out about the Uchiha secret. He answered, yes, Sasuke. I will. Sasuke smiled, thanks, man. He extended his hand through the bar. Naruto looked at the hand and smirked, like I'm gonna fall for that. You shake my hand and pull me into the bars to knock me out and plan an escape. Sasuke gave a smug look and humored his caution, can't blame me for trying. The two laughed. I'll see you around, Sasuke. Hope the guards here take good care of you. They have so far. Sasuke admitted, as he watched Naruto leave. As Naruto left the prison, Kurama thought to him, you really plan on keeping that promise? Itachi wants Sasuke to believe that the Uchiha name can be saved by killing the one who murdered their clan. I may be part of this conspiracy, but Sasuke doesn't know of my link with Itachi now. I'll just one day let him think I killed Itachi, 
and let him die of old age instead. That could take years. True, but hey you never know. Later on, after most of Kanoha was rebuilt to stable condition, everyone was gathered before the administration building, as Tsunade stood above on the balcony, with Naruto at her side. Tsunade announced, thanks to all of your hard work, our village will be better than ever before, the crowd applauded, but I think the best thanks should go to one who just about everyone took for granted. Naruto. Naruto approached and everyone applauded. Naruto began, thank you, everyone. You know at first I thought being banished from Kanoha was the worst thing to ever happen to me. But soon enough I discovered it gave me a chance to look past what I know and further into discovering who or what I really was. Was I just some shinobi from a simple village or something much more than that? And I discovered this. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I'm more than a ninja, I'm a human being just like all of you and everyone else in the world. When I could tell the village was in for a surprise attack by Akatsuki I was torn between coming to help and ignoring it. After all, certain people here conspired to have me banished, and I know there were plenty of you who would have sided with them. Many of the villagers looked guilty, knowing he was right. But I came anyway, because whether I was banished or not this was still my home. I have forgiven you all for how you treated me, but if you really want me to trust you all as a person you'll have to do more than just praise me like a hero because I saved the village. You want my trust, then you should start treating me like I'm somebody and not just a ninja or a hero. Do that and it may be a step in the right direction for you. However I don't plan on returning to Kanoha, many villagers were confused at his claim, until he continued, I however plan to start my own ninja village and hopefully start an alliance with Kanoha if your Hokage sees it fit. He smiled at Tsunade who smiled back. So make no mistake, I will continue to visit Kanoha any chance I have. And one day I will be leaving my own village. The crowd cheered. Naruto then looked at Tsunade and whispered, I'd also like to have a moment with you tonight. What is it, Naruto? There's something I need you to do for me. He answered, much to her confusion. That night while Suijetsu, Yugo, and Karen were set up in a spare room at the administration building, Naruto and Tsunade were at the hospital. Inside a single room, Naruto laid strapped to a table with a light shining down on him, while Tsunade was at his side dressed in a doctor's uniform, are you absolutely sure you want this, Naruto? I am. With these I will be a bridge between both Kanoha and AIM. Plus I promised someone I'd look after one of the pairs. Okay, then. Are you ready? Tsunade asked, as he nodded. So Tsunade applied the anesthesia and painkillers to him, before picking up a scalpel. The very next morning Naruto's friend, and team waited for him as he appeared with Tsunade. Naruto stood with bandages wrapped around his eyes, everyone ready to go. He asked his teammates. Naruto, what happened to you? Hinata gasped with Sakura. Nothing. I just had a little procedure last night. What kind of procedure? Chuji asked. Afraid I can't tell you yet, but one day I will. He answered, and they decided not to push it with him. Well we're ready. Suijetsu answered. So where are you going? Kakashi asked. We're going up to Mount Mayaboku for a bit and relax there, until the bandages are ready to come off. And then I can get to work on hiring Tazuna and his workers in helping rebuild the rest of Yuzushio's buildings. You just be careful out there. Sakura warned him. I will Sakura. Naruto promised, as he felt Hinata, Tenten, and Ino embrace him. We hope to see you again soon, Naruto. Ino said, before kissing him. Take care of yourself. Tenten said, as she kissed him next. And don't forget us. Hinata finished, as she kissed him last. I could never forget about any of you even if I wanted to. He joked. Soon Naruto used his psychic to start his carpet up, as the four jumped on and flew off, with their friends from Kanoha watching them off. Ten years later. And after that incident in Kanoha, Naruto kept true to his plans for Yuzushio. With help from Tazuna and his workers, they were able to make new stronger buildings for Yuzushio. 
Once it was finished constructed Naruto was able to invite all those he promised to welcome into his village. There was Sasami, Kotoheim, and the Fuma clan, Isoribi from the sea country, Mingju and Chao who relocated the Lihua into Yuzushio, Amaru, Sara, Siko the waitress from Kusa who now worked in a new bar and grill, and Misa Mikigami whose spa and boutique were moved from Kusa to Yuzushio. Shizuka even offered to send some of Nadashiko's Kanoichi to serve in his ninja village to help strengthen the alliance between Nadashiko and Yuzushio. Over the course of the years Naruto continued to find other lost and weary travelers looking for a place to call home, and welcome them into his village. After doing a routine mind scan on them with his powers to ensure they weren't spies. Whenever such people like Shizuka, Shion, and Koyuki were in Yuzushio on official business, they would take about villages' progress during meeting hours, while afterwards would have personal downtime with them, along with Hitaru who would accompany Mei. When other such important figures like Gara, A, Shibuki or Oenoki would visit on business with him, they made sure to bring either Temari, Pakura, Samui, Karui, Yujito, Fu or Kuratsuchi to accompany them and for Naruto to see and have fun afterwards. Suijetsu eventually returned to Kiri so he could truly get to work on bringing forth a new generation of seven swordsmen, with Chujuro being one of them. Mei had welcomed him back with open arms, and promised she would ensure that he would be the number one head in the team of swordsmen, with Chujuro acting as his partner. Itachi left the shinobi life in recluse at Yuzushio, where he planned to die merely by old age. He made sure never to be seen by anyone of Konoha or other nation who were visiting. Over time, Yuzushio had started growing larger in terms of strength, shinobi, and allies. Eventually it grew into such a strong village, the daimyos of the five great nations have decided it was able to be recognized as an addition to the other great nations. Therefore allowing Naruto to assume the title of Yuzukagi. Then ten years later, Naruto was standing atop his flying carpet powered by his psychic energy, with Karen and Yugo wearing umbu uniforms at his side. They flew out to the Land of Iron to meet with the other five Kagi about their six-way alliance that had been formed over the course of ten years through strength and bonds made. When they arrived at the meeting summit, he was greeted by their representative and joined his fellow Kagi at a table. Among them was Tsunade with Sakura and Shikamaru acting as her guards, Mei with Suijetsu and Chujuro acting as her guards, B who was appointed Gondai Mei Raika Gi after he decided to retire had Samui and Omoi as his guards, Gara had Temari and Kankuro as his guards. And finally Kuratsuchi who was appointed Yandai Mei Tsuchika Gi after Oonoki reluctantly agreed to retire with what how many years he had left. With her was Akatsuchi and another shinobi acting as her guards. Good, now that Naruto has arrived we can finally begin today's meeting. Tsunade said. Quite so. Gara agreed. Word. B nodded. So good to see you, Yuzuka Gisama. Mei greeted him, with Suijetsu nodding hello to Karen and Yugo who returned to gesture. We hope your trip here was no problem. Kuratsuchi finished. No trouble at all, Naruto answered as he took a seat while having his eyes closed. When he opened them he no longer had his normal eyes, but rather had Abito's Sharingan implanted as his right eye, and Nagato's Rinnegan implanted as his left eye, now then ladies and gentlemen, let's talk business. He finished. Chapter End Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, Peace out.